Welcome back. We've got uh, the next chapter of our pitches, which is about embracing the circular economy. So this is going to be a very exciting uh, group of people to give us their views. And first up uh, from Arup, I'd like to welcome uh, Joanne Manning. So Joanne is going to be telling us about uh, setting the scene for the circular principles for the built environment. Welcome to the stage, Joanne. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, sorry I can't be there with you in person. Uh, I am delighted to be here. Uh, I am Joanne Manning. I lead the circular economy and waste management business for Arab across Australasia. And I'm here to talk to you today about a circular built environment, focusing on the built environment and the opportunities and challenges for that. Next slide. So what is the impact that the built environment has? Next slide. Well, what, so construction, you know, a lot of people think construction just means the actual aspect of constructing, but actually uh, construction means the whole life cycle. So it's everything from the material use, the planning, uh, the operation of the facility, and then very importantly, the maintenance and deconstruction. And at the moment, we are practicing a completely linear model for the vast majority of the construction we put into the uh, built environment. And there is significant wastage that we have uh, with regard to this. Uh, we know that um, uh, across the whole of it, so not just when we are actually constructing material, we are constructing our assets, but actually how we utilize it. And obviously at the moment in COVID, we are seeing that, you know, sort of, you know, sort of absolutely um, highlighted. Um, we, but before that, even uh, nearly 40% of all office spaces uh, in Europe were not even used during, nor during normal work working hours uh, we don't use our we are using our homes more at the moment but typically we don't and we don't we under we underutilize energy and then at the end of our life uh, over half of all the materials and resources we use in construction uh, end up in landfill next slide and um, so why is this important who's looking at it well and um, there's a couple of things first of all people are recognizing um, that the circular economy can actually uh, transform uh, the economy we have when we are have limited resources. Next slide. And interestingly, uh, this was recently in National Geographic. This uh, this in this graphic, and actually, uh, we are currently of all the uh, global resources we are using, uh, we are only recovering about ten percent of them, and we are uh, the vast majority are actually being emitted as pollution. So, what is the circular economy, and why do we need to embrace it? Well, the circular economy uh, looks to shifting. It's, 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 it's a systemic approach uh, to how we operate, and it looks to shift the system that we have through designing out waste and pollution, uh, through keeping materials in use as long as possible, and regenerating the natural system. So the, uh, this is known as the butterfly diagram, which the Alan MacArthur Foundation have developed, and what they have is a, they have a technical side and a, a biological side, and there's different cycles on the technical cycle, the biological cycle. But this can also, next slide, can also be applied. Next slide. Uh, we can also, Arab has looked at how this applies uh, to the water economy. So again, the vast majority of our water at the moment is used linearly, but also within a, having a circular water economy, we can have a nature managed cycle, which is equivalent to the biological cycle, and we can have a human managed cycle, which is equivalent to the technical cycle. Why do we want to do this? Well, the growth that we have had over the last 200 years of in a linear model, yes, it has improved human well-being and it has improved economic activity, but it has had a significant impact on our resources and it has, it has had a significant environment mental impact. So another way of thinking about the circular economy, it's the decoupling of the increase in human well-being and economic activity with resource usage and environmental impact. And actually, the other reason we want to do this is that it has been it has been uh, calculated that it can have huge economic benefit across the world. The Europeans consider it could uh, increase total could have total benefits of nearly two trillion euros. And uh, when you um, uh, uh, calculate how much it could be in in Australia, it could be up to two twenty four billion dollars of additional economic value by twenty thirty. Next slide. And personally for Arab, uh, we have recently re uh, re um, uh, issued or uh, uh, 
revised our global strategy and we have put sustainable development at the heart of everything that we do and we have our own sustainable development strategy too and we have six key principles and as you can see in our, our six key principles adopting a circular economy uh, is sort of centered to that as well so we recognize in Arab that adopting circular principles across all the design and everything that Arab does can actually uh, uh, help us achieve the UN sustainable development goals and sustainable development. So from principles to practice, what does actually this all mean? Well, we are the knowledge partner for to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation for the Built Environment, and that results in us actually producing a number of thought leadership pieces. Next slide. Uh, and we've also done a, a number of research pieces as well, again, by ourselves and with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. So looking at it from a systemic point of view, um, and if you want to go back a slide, from, um, from an ASSA point of view and from an ASSA point of view, we've looked at it specifically from water and also looking at materials when we're actually starting to look at particular materials. All of these things are available, freely available on Arab.com if you are interested in looking at it further. So where is the value lost? Well, I talked about this earlier from, 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 a, from what is the linear economy. So what really happens is, is that um, when we use resources, we don't use them well enough. We don't recycle them long enough. We have shortened life cycles on a lot of our assets. Um, we have, uh, you know, we do not utilize our assets properly. And then at the end, we don't value what we have at the end. So therefore, we have, we, we undervalue the residual value on a lot of things because we do, a lot of that is because we don't have enough data. Um, up to now, a lot of people have looked at the circular economy as a design strategy. So it's around, particularly in Australia, it's been very heavily focused on, uh, you know, sort of linked to waste management. It's sort of people think it's sort of basically progressive waste management. So they're kind of looking at it from a, you know, sort of reduced consumption, you know, reduced costs. But if you look at it from a, a business strategy, you start looking at it in a very different way. It's all about value creation. It's about keeping assets in, in use as long as possible. What data can we embed into that? The speaker uh, before break was talking about data. And it really is a systemic change to, to our supply chains, to, to how we utilize things from a business point of view. Next slide. So from a water point of view, uh, we have Arab has looked at this. We've looked at it to see, well, what are the opportunities uh, towards on a, muni on a typical municipal water systems if you were to apply circular principles? And you can see that there are many opportunities. Next. And, and also, it's not just Arab looking at this. We know, for instance, for the water sector, that the usage of water over the next 10 years is going to, sorry, the demand for water over the next 10 years is going to increase by over 40%. We have finite, well, we, don't, we have finite amount, supplies of potable water. So we need to think about how we are using water better and how we are connecting um, circular principles into the, into the water cycle as well. Okay, that was a bit of a quick run. Hopefully I kept in time. Uh, that's my contact details if you want to reach out to, to, to myself or any of my colleagues and uh, discuss this topic further. Thank you. And thanks, Joanne. That's fantastic.